Today we're helping Peter. He asks to teach him to deal with matrices, to explain how matrices are used in general, which operations are allowed on matrices, matrices and how to perform them, and how to define determinants. Now that's a lot of information, and I won't be able to tell this all in one episode, so we'll take one step at a time. Today we will speak about the idea of matrices and learn to perform some basic operations with them. So off we go. Now basically a matrix is just a table with numbers lying in its cells. These numbers are called elements or entries. So if we uh, put the numbers into the table form and then put them into brackets, we would have matrices. Just as A and B written on our board. A and B are matrices. Now, if matrices are of the same size, we can easily define their sum or difference simply by adding or subtracting the corresponding entries. As we can see, matrices I and A and B are of the same size. They both contain two rows and two columns. Therefore, we can easily define their sum. So we would take the numbers lying in the same positions and simply add them. So we would go like this. We would add one and two thirds and then 2 and minus 5, and then 3 and 0 0.2, and then 4 and 100. Now, following to that logic, we could introduce the operations of multiplication and division of matrices. And according to the algorithm described above, we would take the, the numbers lying in the same positions and then multiply them or divide them. So we would go like this, 1 multiplied by 2 thirds, and then 2 multiplied by minus 5, 3 by 0 0.2, and then 4 by 100. And the same would go for the division. But these last two expressions wouldn't be exactly correct. Because although such element-by-element -element multiplication and division do take place, the matrices resulting from such procedures should never be called the product or the factor. And you might ask, and how can those be obtained? And I do have an answer for that, and I'll reveal it in a little while. As it turned out, the matrices were very useful for <coughs> solving the systems of linear equations. The yeah, other operations became natural to use. First is addition, which goes exactly as described above. So if you, do, if you have two matrices being of the same size, you would simply take the, the corresponding entries and sum them up, just as is described above. And then goes multiplication by a number. This means that you would have a constant and you would try to multiply it by a matrix. And to do that, you would simply have to multiply this constant by each of the elements of the matrix. So if you have the matrix A being as at the beginning, and you wanted to multiply it by 7, you would simply have to multiply 7 by each of uh, the elements of the matrix A. So you would go like this, 7 multiplied by 1, 7 multiplied by 2, and 7 multiplied by 3, and 7 multiplied by 4. And here comes the most interesting part, the multiplication of the matrices, which result into, results into the product matrix. Now, first of all, is the thing that you should always remember. This procedure may, uh, may only be performed on one condition. If the number of rows of columns, if the number of columns of the first matrix being multiplied, equals to the number of rows of the second matrix being multiplied. So if, if you have the matrix A being of the size n by m, which means that it contains n rows and n columns, it can only be multiplied by the matrix containing m rows. So matrix B being of the size, say, m by l, is a perfect choice for this matter, because it contains m rows and l columns. Having multiplied these two matrices, you will always obtain the, the product matrix being of the size n by l. n by l. 
Now, for better understanding of the whole idea of multiplication of matrices, let us take a look at the picture written uh, drawn on our board. So, each entry of the product matrix laying on the crossing of the certain row of the first matrix being multiplied and certain column of the second matrix being multiplied equals to the sum of the products of the corresponding elements of these row and column. Now it does sound a little messy and twisted, so once again. In order to calculate the highlighted element, you would first find the appropriate row in the first matrix being multiplied. And then you would found, find the appropriate column in the second matrix being multiplied. And then you would start multiplying the elements of these lines, moving towards the element you are interested in. So we would multiply the first element of the row by the first element of the column. And then you would multiply the second element of the row by the second element of the column. And then the third one by the third one. And you would continue doing that until you've reached the end of the row and the column. And when that happens, you would sum up these products. Now once again, first element of the row by the, second, uh, by the first element of the column. And then second element of the row by the second element of the column. And then third element of the row by the third element of the column. And the fourth by fourth. This is exactly why the number of columns of the first matrix being multiplied must always match the number of rows of the second matrix being multiplied. Now, let's try and multiply two real matrices. These matrices would be P and Q, written on our board. They are of the sizes 3 by 4 and 4 by 2, which means that P has 3 rows and 4 columns, and Q has four rows and two columns. A perfect match. Let us rearrange these matrices into the table, into the tables, so that the process of multiplication would be convenient for us. Okay. Now let us fill in these tables with the numbers. So this is P and this is Q. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then Q. Minus 1, minus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 7, and 8. As discussed above, the product matrix of P and Q would be of the size 3 by 2, because P has 3 rows and Q has 2 columns. Let's also set numbers for each of the elements, each of the elements of this, the product matrix. And we would go like this. 1, 1, 1, 2, because this is the first element of the first row, and this is the second element of the first row. And then the first element of the second row, and then the second element of the second row. And then the first element of the third row, and then the second element of the third row. Now let us calculate these elements one by one. So first we are calculating uh, element number 1, 1. We are finding the appropriate row, the first row of the first matrix being multiplied. And then the appropriate column, the first column of the second matrix being multiplied. And then we are sta starting multiplying. Now we will take the first element of the found row and multiply it by the first element of the found column. Plus 2 multiplied by 3 plus 3 multiplied by 5 and plus 4 multiplied by minus 7. which is minus 8. And then the element number 1, 2. We're going to be using the same row 
of the first matrix being multiplied and the second column of the second matrix being multiplied. So we'll take the first element of the first row of the, of the first matrix being multiplied, one, and multiply it by the first element of the found column, by minus two. And then we'll continue doing that. So two multiplying by four, plus three multiplied by six, plus four multiplied by eight. And it's 56. And then the first element of the second row of the product matrix. We're now going to be using the second row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. 5 multiplied by minus 1 plus 6 multiplied by 3 plus 7 multiplied by 5 and plus 8 multiplied by minus 7 which is also minus 8. Then the second element of the second row the same row of the first matrix being multiplied and the second column of the second matrix being multiplied. 5 multiplied by minus 2 plus 6 multiplied by 4 plus 7 multiplied by 6 and plus 8 multiplied by 8 which is 120. And the last row now, the third row of the first matrix being multiplied and the first column of the second one. So, it goes like this. 9 multiplied by minus 1 plus 10 multiplied by 3 plus 11 multiplied by 5 plus 12 multiplied by minus 7, which is minus 6. And the last but not the least, Element number 3, 2. So we're going to be using the third row of the first matrix and the second column of the second matrix. 9. Multiplied by minus 2 plus 10 multiplied by 4 plus 11 multiplied by 6 plus 12 multiplied by 8, which is 184. Now, let us fill in the product matrix with the numbers we've just calculated. Minus 8, 56, minus 8 as well, 120, minus 6, 184. Or, if we written it down properly, we would go like this. Matrix P being of the size 3 by 4 multiplied by the matrix Q being of the size 4 by 2 results into the matrix PQ being of the size 3 by 2 and looking as follows minus 8, 56 minus 8, 120 minus 6, 184 Now, you might ask, why haven't we said anything about division of matrices? And that would be a reasonable question. But you see, dividing matrices is much more a complicated procedure than multiplication, and it deserves particular attention. And yet, we have learned the whole concept of matrices and learned to perform basic operations with them, which are addition of matrices, multiplication by a number, and multiplication of matrices. So you have lots to enjoy.